Cine Selects India's Most Desirable. Welcome to Simi Selects, India's Most Desirable. Actually, the world's most desirable. Because to say my guest tonight is a cult figure may be an understatement. She doesn't have fans. She has followers. And they worship anything that she says or does. And there are also millions who simply love her music. Just put your paws off. Because you were born this way, baby. Number one on Twitter with 12 million followers. Over 33 million Facebook fans. She's a global brand that rivals the most powerful companies in the world. Pop icon, triple Grammy award winner. She's a legend and she's only 25. Do you still need to ask who is she? Hi, I'm Lady Gaga and I'm changing the world one thing at a time. So come along with me as I meet the greatest pop star of this generation, Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga, it's such a pleasure and a privilege for me to meet you. It's so amazing to meet you too. You look so stunningly gorgeous. We all gasped when you walked in. Thank you for coming today. Thank you so much for being so kind. And welcome to my show, which is Simi Selects India's Most Desirable, the Lady Gaga special. Wow, very exciting. So, Lady Gaga global phenomenon, pop messiah. You've created what I would call probably an anthem of liberation. It's a mantra that applies to everybody, including me, everyone. I'm beautiful this way because God made no mistakes. I'm on the right track, baby. I was born this way. I would love to know the genesis of this thought. It's about being perfect the way that you're made and being okay with who you are. Whatever you are. Right. It's suddenly an answer. To all questions. To all questions. And giving such an answer is freedom. Yes. The, to me, that it's, it's a, a liberating uh, question and a liberating answer. Why, why I was born this way? Uh, that is sort of an overarching question in life, isn't it? Absolutely. Why? Why are we here? Why are we this way? Why do we act and behave the way that we do? And born this way is the answer. But she was not born this way. Five years ago, Lady Gaga did not exist. But for that, we have to go back in time. She was born Stephanie Joanne Angelina Germanotta in New York City to wealthy Italian-American parents. My mother made me play piano when I was four. It was kind of a discipline thing, and she used to say, you don't have to practice, but you gotta sit there for an hour every day. You can, you can either play, or you can just sit there. And probably for the first couple of years, it was like, you know, I used to sit at the piano, and like I'd start banging, and I was a really bad kid. And then I got bored just sitting there, so... I started to play. And then I, I got really, really great at classical piano. A prodigy, Stephanie went on to write her first piano ballad at 13 and performed at 14. Stephanie studied at the upscale All Girls Convent of the Sacred Heart on the Upper East Side the same high school attended by Caroline Kennedy and the Hiltons. Well, when I was in school, I uh, always felt uh, the need to express myself. I was always inclined to do theater and to do music, and I dressed differently, and I spoke differently, and I was always singing. She felt different to other girls and would get taunted for her eccentricities. I feel to understand Lady Gaga, I would need to know a little bit of what Stephanie Germanotta went through. I had, you know, a few really close friends. And then other than that, I was quite bullied in school. 
And I didn't, you know, dress like I dress now. I dressed much more conservatively, but it was just my way, it's my aura. That was very different than the other girls. They couldn't accept it? No, I, well, I think they just, I was easy, an easy target. She said they called her rabbit teeth for the huge gap she had in her front teeth. She said boys picked her up and threw her into the trash can while other girls watched and laughed. Whenever I've read about your, your childhood, I noted one line that's repeated and recurs quite often. You said, well, they said this, they called me rabbit teeth or they did this or mm -hmm. that. And you said, I held back my tears. Oh, yeah. And you keep saying that. I held back my tears and I went home and then I cried in my pillow. But you never showed them those tears. No, I never showed my mother either. And my mother saw me cry more than anyone saw. But something about bullying feels so shameful. Even with your parents, you don't, you don't want to disappoint your parents and you don't want them to know how you're being treated in school because you're afraid that your family will say, well, what, you're not cool? or you're not as smart as the other kids, or I think genuinely it breeds something that is shameful. So that's the time that, that the persona of Lady Gaga must have been gestating within Stephanie? Yes, I guess the message that I would put out to you know young people in school that feel that way is, you know, don't fight back. Don't stoop to that, um, that place of negativity and that place of um, retaliation retaliation or defense. Uh, just know in your heart and in your mind that you have something unique and special inside of you that is drawing all of these people to pay attention to you. So how then did a simple, conservative girl from a well-to-do Catholic family transform? I was starting to cling very tightly to my artistry and throw away everything else. Anything that was, I was ashamed of, anything that I was nervous about, any um, clothing that I had kept to wear to try to fit in, I threw it all away. I got rid of everything and I just said, I'm going to leave, do it on my own. And my parents were very worried about me. I, I dropped out of school. I said, I'm going to get a job. I'm going to support myself, I don't want your money, I want to do it all on my own. She announced to her parents, I'm going to be a rock star. For it, my dad gave me a year to get signed, so I figured it out. The girl from Upper Manhattan moved to the down market, Lower East Side of New York. I had to strip myself of everything that had happened before so that I could be reborn. She performed in rock bars. She created her own band. Hey guys, what's up? We're Stephanie and the band. Stephanie struggled to get her music heard. I got told no. I can't even begin to tell you. The number of times I have been told no in the past still is greater than the number of times I'm told yes today. She supported herself with waitressing jobs and working in strip clubs. You know, everybody dressed different, everybody talked different, everybody's swagger was different, and I, I'm, I'm somebody that likes to experiment with different things, so I bought a lot of leather and a lot of sequins, and I started making, I was go-go dancing for fun, so I started making my costumes because it was cheaper. She finally connected to a group of artists who encouraged her to just go for it, to unleash her wild side. Really when I started being myself, I mean, I've always been an artist, but when I started to be just who I really am, which is a provocative exhibitionist, somebody that does things for attention pretty shamelessly, that's when I was like, okay, so just be who you are, and then that's your artistry. She wrote songs to Britney Spears, and then finally got an offer to cut her own album. She would be launched, but as Stephanie Germanotta, hmm, wasn't happening. She had to get a new name.
who the hell am I to do what I do? Why do I deserve this? Who am I to do this? And then I remember that I'm talented. <laughs> and then I remember that I'm actually very good at what I do. Most people like it. <laughs> Freddie Mercury was a favorite of Stephanie, and especially his rendering of Radio Gaga. Gaga revealed that she was playing a record called Again, Again for her music producer, Rob Susari. He said, you're so Freddie Mercury. You just sound like a gay man trapped in a woman's body. You're so Gaga. So Radio Gaga. And every time she'd come into the studio, Rob would say, Gaga is here. And then he just started calling her Gaga. The name stuck. She would be Gaga. But Gaga what? According to Rob, one day he was texting Stephanie. He typed the words Radio Gaga on his cell phone screen. And the device just ran into an autocorrect, changing radio into lady. She texted him back, that's it. I'm Lady Gaga. Don't ever call me Stephanie again. I'm mostly called Gaga even by my mom. My parents call me both. And when they feel I'm being slightly conservative about things, they always say now, are you okay? Is everything all right? The transformation was complete. Stephanie had a new name. A new persona. She was free. As Lady Gaga, the rise was stratospheric. Her first single was a smash. This was followed by the super successful. Her rocket selling album, The Fame showed everybody that Lady Gaga had come to stay. Everybody to listen to the fame and have a rad time. I want you to dance and make out. And I want when people hear my music to go, I don't know what party she went to, but I want to go there. I want to hang out with her. In 2010, Lady Gaga was included into Time Magazine's list of most influential people in the world. In October 2010, Lady Gaga broke another record, scoring over 1.3 billion combined views of all her videos online. The first artist in YouTube history to reach this mark. A few months later, in early 2011, she topped the Forbes list with a grand house in Bel Air, Los Angeles. She travels in her own plane, going on world tour, heading the moon. Sometimes I sing, you know, I do everything. It's really, um, it's about my journey. The explosive effects, the heightened visual drama. Oh 
the daring. The daring. The caring. She affectionately calls her fans monsters. dancing on the fire escape that I used to dream on in New York City. That's where I used to dream, and I used to sit out there, and I was bad, I don't smoke anymore, but I used to smoke cigarettes, and I would turn on, uh, you know, David Bowie records, and Beatles, the Beatles. Cindy Lauper as well. Cindy Lauper, and Madonna, and Yoko Ono, my God, I used to listen to Yoko Ono all day long, and I would dance and sing on that fire escape. Gaga never lip syncs. What really sets Gaga apart from her contemporaries is that she's responsible for every part of her act. She directs her own shows, designs the set, chooses the clothes, and writes the songs. She retains complete control over everything. The visuals and the ideas and the fashion is really forward thinking. It's completely 150,000% my own. And if it's not, I'll like have anxiety about it when we'll go on stage because <laughs> it's got to be perfect. It's got to be exactly me. Gaga has changed the music world, the fashion world, and the world of the monsters who believe in her. You know, when people know that I've met Lady Gaga, the first question I'm always asked is, what did she wear? Gaga never wears the same outfit twice. The day I met her, she had 15 interviews lined up, and for each interview, she changed her outfit and hairstyle. Every appearance, a new look. Incredible, but true. Crazy shoulders, lingerie as outerwear, I love breaking rules. The investment of time, effort, and dedication is unparalleled. Crazy hairdos and wigs. Surreal sunglasses and accessories. It's a kaleidoscope of visual imagery. It's like a variety show. I'm not trying to like just entertain anybody. I really want to bother everybody. I want everyone to go like a little bit like, oh my God, what is she doing? Ew, what's going on? There was the bubble dress. The outrageous meat dress and shoes. It's the nerve. All you gotta have is nerve. That's the one thing that keeps me up at night. I say to myself, who the hell am I to do what I do? Why do I deserve this? Who am I to do this? And then I remember that I'm talented. <laughs> and then I remember that I'm actually very good at what I do. I'm extremely educated, but that's not something that I, I'm not like one to like be defensive about my work. It is what it is. You either love it or you don't. Most people like it. <laughs> at five feet one in, Gaga is never without her heels. And what heels? The eyelashes hardly ever come off. She even sleeps in them. She said, whenever I have a lover, I leave them in their apartment on the pillow. Kind of like a cute say. If anyone said, who is Lady Gaga, I would be okay with she is the most impressive con artist of fame. I mean, I literally trick people every day into believing that I'm somebody, and I'm not. Vogue named Lady Gaga one of the best dressed celebrities of 2010. You're a major fashion icon, and your headline-making outfits just zap everybody in the world. The fashion police haven't been able to define your style, but I would love it if you could define your style for me. I would um, call it avant-garde, uh, 
high street fashion. Okay. Or garage couture. <laughs> Where did you last wear regular clothes? Like well, us. these are my regular clothes. You're not dressed regularly, my no? dear. No, you have <laughs> shoulder pads and there's sequins on your outfit. So you don't look so regular to me. You look like a fashionista in my eyes. Well, thank you. I'm going to take that as a compliment. I wonder, and so must you, is the amazing Lady Gaga ever ordinary? Well, yes. Rarely. I know people perceive a certain thing about me, like, oh, she's, you know, this big pop singer. But to be quite honest, I still feel like that girl in leather from New York City that just wants somebody to believe in her. That young girl in high school, but also as the girl that didn't want to cry in front of her parents when she was young. If it came to a choice between fame and love, which would you choose? Welcome back. The Simi selects India's most desirable, the Lady Gaga special. You know, for a woman who writes about love and yearning and heartbreak and romance, little is known about Gaga's personal life. In 2005, when she was working in New York's rock bar St. Jerome's on Rivington Street, Stephanie Germanotta met Luke Carl, a hard metal drummer, bartender. They dated for three years. She fell desperately in love with the lean, long-haired guy in black leather. It was a passionate, tempestuous relationship. Once, they went on a vacation to the Cayman Islands. In this romantic setting, they fought, and the relationship ended bitterly. Gaga was heartbroken. She returned to New York depressed and despondent. She felt that she had reached rock bottom. She accepted an offer to go to Los Angeles to write a song, not knowing that song would change her life. The song was... She never went back. She left behind her boyfriend and her apartment in New York. Her mother went in to clear it for her. She had a new life. But friends say that Gaga has not been in love since. Luke Carl became the inspiration behind some of her songs on the Fame album. Well, as I was driving through Norway, I was thinking about this experience, and I began to think about love and loneliness and danger. So I wrote a song about being in love uh, with someone but being unable to tell them. Uh, so I guess you could say that's stuck in a bad romance. Veering between fantasy and reality, fame and love, her wounds had obviously not healed. Betrayal became a recurring theme of the music she wrote. Well, Claude. That moment, uh, she's saying that she trusts him and he's saying that he loves her, uh, but he's trying to position the two of them on the balcony to have their photograph taken. And then when she stops him, he uh, throws her over the edge. was as if she felt she had died. She returns wounded and handicapped by this broken um, relationship, uh, but she perseveres. And all of those things, the crutches and the, the wheelchair, they're, they're all- Wounded, it's the wounds she has It was all meant now. to be indicative of the wounds, but also uh, I, I sort of comically turned those wounds into fashion pieces. And the ritualistic killing of male lovers in her last three videos is related to this breakup. I won't stop until that boy is mine. Maybe yeah. you'll be famous, chase you down until you love me. Papa, Papa Roxy.
911 emergency. Hello? I just killed my boyfriend. She alternated between servitude and revenge. Up to the ultimate betrayal, Judas. Judas originally, when I wrote it, was about being betrayed by an ex-boyfriend. So I was using the analogy of Judas in the Bible, who is the ultimate betrayer. I uh, started to write this song, and also the person uh, that I um, uh, was writing about, um, uh, we used to always listen to Judas Priest together. Okay. So that was sort of another layer. In the song, I'm struggling between two things. When he calls to me, I'm ready. I'll wash his feet with my hair if he needs. Forgive him when his tongue lies through his brain. Though after three times, he betrays me. Uh, so I'm struggling between the reality of being a woman uh, and serving someone and, and the fantasy of being able to stop the greatest betrayal of all time. I wanna love you. But something's pulling me away from you Jesus is my virtue And Judas is the demon I cling to I cling to Just a party full of baby It's a problem I'm still I'm a Judas baby I'm just a party full of baby It's a problem I'm still I'm a Judas baby Two years had passed since the breakup with Luke Carl. In 2010, Gaga visited New York again. But now, she was the most powerful pop star in the world. In May, she met up once again with the man she could not forget, her ex-boyfriend. They hooked up for coffees and donuts to test the waters. A month later, the couple went public for the first time. They attended a New York Mets game together and the tabloids speculated. So who is this guy, Luke Carl? Luke, 30, is a Nebraska guy and hails from Omaha. He now lives in Brooklyn, New York, and he's a musician, a DJ, and sometimes works as a bartender. He's tight-lipped about his relationship with Lady Gaga. Gaga always said that she'd sacrificed love for a successful music career. Now it looked like things were finally turning around. Could she find love again? Her most personal and joyous song, You and I, is explicitly about her Nebraska guy and resuming their relationship. Been a long time since I came around. Been a long time, but I'm back in town. This time I'm not leaving without you. It tastes like whiskey when you kiss me, I would give. Shorn of the glitz and regalia, she was like any other ordinary girl, in love with her man. There were stories that they were planning to get married. Gaga had never been so happy. Almost a year after they reunited, Life and Style magazine reported Gaga and Luke are fighting a lot. It didn't last. Gaga and Luke broke up again. Inwardly shattered by the recent break, Gaga was now seen mostly in black. I'm focused and I'm calm, mm -hmm. but I, I wear black on the outside because black is how I feel on the inside. On his Twitter, Luke posted, I miss you. If it came to a choice between fame and love, which would you choose? 
Well, I would choose my work. Any reason for it? Um, because I would die without it. And I could never be reborn again. My work will never leave me in the morning. It's always there when I go to sleep with my makeup on. When I wake up in the morning, my work is right there to kiss me. With all the people that surround you, are you lonely? Well, yes. But I'm supposed to be. I'm an artist. We wallow in loneliness and solitude our whole lives in search of the answer to hundreds of millions of questions that run through our mind at all times. So yes, I'm lonely and I'm married to my loneliness. Wise as you are at 25, what is your concept of love? My concept of love? My concept of love is that you want the greatest possible thing for that person. What keeps you up at night, Lady Gaga? What makes you afraid? That I won't get it all out. <laughs> that somehow I'll miss out on a creative idea that I have and won't have time. That's your fear. I also am afraid of missing out on things with my family. You're very close to your family? Oh yeah. I'm so, so, so close with my family. And I love them so much. So sometimes it's just hard to be away. But I always go home and I make my dad dinner. And my, all my friends all come over and I cook for them. And uh, I crack open a beer and I'm the same chick from New York that I always was. I think that's, you know, the duty of a daughter. I love my dad so much. I just left tour and I went home. What about Gaga's family? Gaga's father, Joseph Germanotta, is a successful internet entrepreneur and is called the godfather of hotel Wi-Fi. My family, they were the first in their generation to go to college and their families. And everything that my sister and I had growing up, they worked very hard for. Here's a younger sister, Natalie. Clearly, Gaga has always been a daddy's girl. He gave her the nickname Loopy when she was little and still calls her that today. Gaga's father, Joseph, had a serious heart problem and needed surgery. But for years, he rejected every doctor's advice. Speechless, uh, one of my favorite songs, if not the most favorite song on the new album, I wrote about my father and I, I feared his death. And that was my fear of death monster. Terrified at the possibility of losing him, the daughter came back and insisted that he have the surgery to replace his heart valves. I kicked his tushy. Well, he didn't want to have that surgery and I, I made him. I made him do it. I think that's, you know, the duty of a daughter. I love my dad so much. I just left tour and I went home. Doctor said he had the surgery just in time. Now he's healthy and happy. Oh boy, you've left me speechless. And running our family restaurant. As a memento, Gaga got a new tattoo on her left shoulder, a heart with dad written inside. There was so much to ask Lady Gaga and not enough time. I can't leave without asking you if you know about Bollywood. Yes, of course I know about Bollywood. What does Bollywood signify to you? There's such a theatrical and musical element to it, and that's what I love about it the most. Because uh, it's so commercial for India uh, and for the rest of the world. It's just this completely heightened sense of reality. It's completely surreal. And I think it's genius. Well, and I'm excited to go see some real Bollywood when I'm in India, which uh, is going to be in October. You are coming to India yes, in October. I am absolutely coming to India this October. I love Indian food, so delicious. I would need to come to an Indian cooking class. Which kind of food do you like? I, I, I love it all. I'm not a very picky eater, actually. And I love spicy foods, I love curry. I used to eat Indian food with my friends all the time in New York. I just love it. You can tell everyone I will be in India in October, and I can't wait. India, this is Lady Gaga. Muche, tumse, piare.
प्यार है प्यार है is the out of provocative side of lady gaga that we all know and when i flew to singapore to meet her i confess i thought that i may find a prima donna a diva or maybe just a wacky eccentric pop star but i saw in her a refinement i didn't expect i also saw sensitivity only they just had scars who never felt a wound gaga had been wounded she empathizes I also found a person who was very girly. You know she was remarking on every detail, my shoes, my bag, my outfit, much like my girlfriends do. She's not hesitant to praise another woman. And that's very rare, isn't it? Critics may try to dissect and decipher her as critics do, but for me it was emancipating to watch a woman being exactly who she wants to be. India believes in reincarnation. We believe that you have to take many births you have to be born again and again until you achieve the word is mukti which means freedom freedom and salvation and i find that you are one person that i can know of who has reincarnated within your own lifetime well thank you you've also achieved your freedom haven't you i feel quite liberated i feel i feel liberation but i continue to feel more liberation through my ability to liberate other people and you know after meeting her i myself felt liberated suddenly the smallness of people what they say didn't matter so much gaga had braved it out she dared to be herself we don't dare we conform we are boxed in by convention by what people will say we think we're free but we're not i've seen freedom i've seen lady gaga <laughs>